it's uh, October the 12th, 2008. I'm still in Dubrovnik, Croatia, and it's about 4 o'clock in the morning. I woke up thinking about um, the bus driver who kicked me off the bus, or almost kicked me off, who pushed me off the bus, let's say, and um, some other things. For example, how um, I was talking to two different people in the hostel, and um, they both were interrupting me and neither one knew how to show that they understood me. One was saying something like, yeah, but you have to, da 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 da, you have to compromise. And another one, I was telling him, I tried to tell him the story about the first one, and he interrupted me. And he said, oh, that's like I was talking to this American girl and she was trying to blame everyone. But actually, and she, he said that, um, she was getting nervous when he was talking to her, and then he mentioned that to her. He said, and she said, "Oh, you well, it's your fault." And then she tried to blame it on something else. But I wasn't talking about anyone who was blaming anything on anyone. And I was trying to tell him that um, this guy wasn't a good listener because he was telling someone what they had to do. So blaming someone, telling someone what they have to do, and interrupting them isn't the same thing, so obviously I didn't feel understood and I felt interrupted and not really listened to. And it's sad because both of these guys are smart guys. One is a, um, the first one is doing research in something like mechanical engineering or electrical engineering in a university. <laughs> so he's already gone to the university and now his job is to do research there. And nowhere along the way did he learn anything about listening or emotional support. And it's, it's especially sad because he said he doesn't like being alone and um, he just broke up with his girlfriend in Germany and the reason he took this trip is to kind of have a break for a while but he definitely didn't like being alone. And I feel sad for anybody who's traveling alone as long as I've been traveling alone. And um, actually the guy from Argentina, Emilio, who, um, who puts the blue face on and makes the people laugh for a few minutes. Um, he's traveling alone too. He's got kind of a girlfriend in Denmark, but they spend lots of time apart. And um, and the other guy who interrupted me and told me about the guy, the girl from America, um, who was trying to blame people. Um, he's also traveling alone and doesn't have a girlfriend. So anyhow, so here's what I'm doing in the kitchen right now. By the way, I like this hostel because A, you can come down to the kitchen at 4 o'clock in the morning. It's not locked, like some hostels lock their kitchens during the night. And um, B, I didn't have to wake anybody up, like in some hostels when you walk past the reception desk, you, the lights come on automatically. <laughs> like in the uh, hostel in Cluj, Romania. Or, um, or if you open a door, it wakes up the person who's sleeping there like the night person working the night shift and um, I feel bad and I also know that if you wake up the person enough times they're going to start feeling resentful towards you even if it's their job they even they'll even say oftentimes they'll say no it's okay but after a while they get tired of it obviously because they need their sleep so I, I don't want to wake them up both because a I feel bad for them and I know they need their sleep and b because I know that later they're going to start feeling resentful towards me because I'm one of the only people who gets up and works during, in the middle of the night. <coughs> and also sometimes I stay a few days in a hostel if I like the hostel. So anyhow, the other thing I like about this hostel is that it it has a, um, a two burner little stove and it has a refrigerator and some pots and pans. Just actually just enough to cook my couscous. And here's my couscous. And I'm cooking my couscous with these bullion, bullion cubes. Chicken bullion. I hope they didn't kill any chickens to make this. Okay, I think you get the idea. Okay, that's all for now.
Well, this is what couscous looks like, in case you don't know what couscous looks like when it's cooked. And it only takes like four or five minutes to cook after the water is boiling. But they kind of mislead you because on a lot of these boxes they'll say something like, like here on this one it says, down there it says four minutes. But actually it's four minutes after the water starts boiling, so it takes about five minutes or so for the water to start boiling. So four plus five kids equals nine. There's your math lesson for the day. Well, I also like this hostel because there's this big room down here that I can come to and not bother anybody and I can do my writing etc. Not just my writing but my video making. I haven't been writing much lately. It's kind of easier and more fun. More satisfying to make the videos. Mostly it's easier. Now I'm going to tell you the story about this instant water heater. Not this instant water heater but and uh, if you come from a country that doesn't have these things, by the way, these are instant water heaters. And the way they work is when you turn on the hot water, then they instantly heat up this, this tank. Or maybe there's a little bit of hot water in there, but um, they have coils inside that quickly heat up the rest of the water or reheat it. And the reason um, I wanted to talk about that is because when I was in... France one time on my first trip to Europe after I had just finished I think my first year of MBA school at the University of Texas in Austin where I was living with my girlfriend at the time time Ann Morris who was later no who actually then was studying electrical engineering she was getting her masters in electrical engineering and now she I think has a happy family in Chicago but um, anyhow um, yeah, there's a lot of history <laughs> about that relationship. But um, anyhow, so we um, we got off the train in some city in France, and there was a little old lady there who offered us a room. And um, I'd never had this happen anywhere in the world before, but um, we decided to follow her. We walked a few blocks and went into her little flat, as they say over here in Europe, her room or apartment or whatever. And... Um, we were feeling a little bit apprehensive about the whole thing because we didn't know anything about these private accommodation people who worked in train stations. And um, again, this was a little old lady. But anyhow, so we put our things in the room and um, then I went in the bathroom to take a shower and um, I saw one of these instant hot water kind of things for the shower and I didn't really know how it worked. I think she had to come in and turn it on or something the first time. And um, as I was taking a shower, I think, I started getting paranoid about maybe this lady works with somebody else, and while we're sleeping, they're going to come in and kill us and steal all our things. <laughs> so I, um, I told Anne, and we talked about it, and we decided not to stay there. So we told the lady, and now I feel bad because like, there's no way in the world that lady was going to hurt us. But this is part of the paranoia of growing up in the United States, and this was way before September 11th. This was like in 1983 or so. So anyhow, I, every time I see one of those things, it reminds me of that lady, and I still feel bad for walking out on her because she had lost her customer that day, or maybe she didn't. Maybe she just had to walk back to the train station and get another customer. But anyhow, I could never find her again. I'm not even sure what city it was. Otherwise, I would probably go back and apologize to her, maybe offer like to give her money for that night.